<sighs> Here goes nothing. Megapolis is the latest film by legendary director Francis Ford Coppola. It's set in the city of New Rome, based off of modern-day New York. Here, we witness the main conflict between Caesar Catalina, a brilliant architect played by Adam Driver, and the greedy mayor Franklin Cicero, played by Giancarlo Esposito. Between them is the mayor's daughter, Julia Cicero, played by Nathalie Emanuel, with her loyalty divided between both her father and her beloved. Now, I primarily stuck to the plot synopsis posted online for my description of Megapolis, as my attempts to try and distill its story in a few sentences on my own would fail to capture how this thing actually felt. But when you boil the whole thing down, that's essentially what it comes down to. It plays as a sort of Shakespearean Greek tragedy, with numerous themes of political satire and dashes of sci-fi thrown in for good measure. And Coppola takes all of these elements and uses them to create an experience that I haven't had with any other film of this year. Going into my screening, I had no idea what to expect, especially with the distribution of letterbox reviews being the most mixed I've ever seen a film get. Couple that with the amount of controversy and behind-the-scenes drama that was occurring, my anticipation was through the roof. And let me just say point blank, if you were going in and hoping for a consistent narrative that flows naturally and reaches a fulfilling conclusion, you're gonna be disappointed. Because Megapolis is an absolute mess, pure and simple. Its script is pretty terrible. There are numerous directions that the story takes which are completely baffling, and numerous subplots that just sort of start and stop on their own without any rhyme or reason. Oh, that character who was plotting to do something nefarious? Yeah, he just sort of died off screen. Oh yeah, the main character has the ability to control time. How can he do that exactly? I don't know, stop asking questions. And that's not to mention the dialogue, which is also completely bonkers, including one line mentioned by Aubrey Plaza's character, which will forever be etched into my brain. By the way, her character is named Wow Platinum. Yeah, I'll let that sink in. And the rest of the dialogue is an assortment of quotes from famous philosophers and quotes from other movies. As a David Fincher fan, I could tell a quote was from Fight Club a mile away. The cast for this thing is also stacked. With the director being Coppola, you can imagine why. In addition to the leads I already mentioned, you have Dustin Hoffman, Shia LaBeouf, Talia Schreier, Lawrence Fishburne, Jason Schwartzman, and John Voight, who is definitely, uh, giving a performance. The scope and scale of the production is obviously massive, and the whole thing just has this energy that's firing on all cylinders constantly. And while some actors were incredibly adept at matching this energy, others didn't really mesh with it as well. Aubrey Plaza fits the role like a glove, and she was an absolute joy to see whenever she was on screen. She 100% knew what kind of movie she was in. Nathalie Emanuel, however, was not as good. Her performance felt like it was coming from an actual drama, which in Megapolis doesn't really fit at all. Adam Driver is fantastic as always. I don't think he could give a bad performance even if he held a gun to his head. By the way, if you haven't seen Patterson, you should definitely go see that. There's a great deal of screen time dedicated to lengthy monologues that his character Caesar espouses, which I'm sure would be terrifying to most actors. But Driver took the material and ran with it, crafting a performance that I felt was perfectly suited for this film and what it was trying to do. And as I'm going to discuss later, this is a film that's been in development for decades. There were actors who were up for this role that you wouldn't even believe, including Paul Newman, Russell Crowe, Christian Bale, and even Nicolas Cage. God, if I could just peek into that alternate dimension and see the performance Nicolas Cage would have given this megalomaniac, that would have been... That would be something to behold, all right. Giancarlo Esposito is also solid in his role. Though I do feel bad that he's been typecast to play these antagonistic characters so many times after Breaking Bad. But, you know, the character also just wasn't super believable to me. I mean, I just can't imagine New York having this corrupt of a mayor. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. Now, I know I've been saying a lot of things in this review that could double as both complaints and compliments, and honestly, I kind of mean it in both senses every time. Megapolis isn't really a film that I can distill in a few sentences to really give you a sense of what it's like. It's the kind of viewing experience you need to see on your own. It would be like describing what it feels like to take a bunch of hallucinogenics while going on a tilt-to-whirl with a college philosophy major as you two debate architecture. You just have to be there. And I just respect Coppola for going all in on this project. From what I read, he has been developing this movie for decades, with it taking so many different iterations as time went on. Like seriously, go on the IMDb page for it and take a look at how long he's been talking about Megapolis. According to Lawrence Fishburne, he was discussing this movie back when they were filming Apocalypse Now in 1979. 
He put up his own funds to finance this project, and it's something that he was quite obviously passionate about. And coming from a director who's given us some of cinema's greatest classics, I have to admit, I respect the creative grind. Especially when this creative grind leads to the kind of visuals on display here. Fellow YouTube movie critic Dan Merle said that this is the kind of film you'd see projected on a screen at the Met Gala, and I agree wholeheartedly. While not all of the effects look real, it all lends to this heightened sense of reality that just oozes a complete, total sense of synergy. The effects here are deliberate, much in the way that David Lynch's effects for Twin Peaks The Return were deliberate. This film is undoubtedly a big swing for the fences. There are a lot of decisions that were made, and, you know, while some of them paid off, a lot of others just did not. Just to give you a general sense of my theater-going experience for you to gauge where you may lie, an elderly couple sitting next to me were trying to decide what was going on in the plot, the people in the front row clapped when the movie ended, and the couple behind me were like, WTF was that after the credits started rolling. So I would say that would sum up the reaction to Megapolis pretty well. Bottom line, if you are someone who likes more conventional films with a proper sense of pacing, tone, and storytelling, then I would say to avoid Megapolis like the plague. But if you want to see one of the greatest directors of all time, just go for it in what is undoubtedly the most ambitious thing you'll see all year, I say give it a shot. I was expecting this to be over three hours, and it was barely two and a half hours, so if you have a free uh, Tuesday afternoon, you should see it. Did a lot of the movie work? Not at all. Is it kind of a scatterbrain mess? Undoubtedly. Would I watch it again? A thousand percent. So in conclusion, I'm going to give Megapolis a C? B minus? D plus? I, I don't know. I think I'll stick with C, but I can imagine this grade changing. Anyway, did you see Megapolis? What did you think about it? Comment below and let me know.